Yo people, in this video I just wanted to go through and sort of dissect the full storyline of what's going on between the Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury fight camps because there's a lot of quotes going around, flying around the media, the media is saying this, Bob Arum saying that, Frank Moran saying another thing, Shelley Finkel was saying that they still want the fight so there's a lot of rumours going around but I just want to clear things up. So to fully understand the situation that's going on right now between Wilder and Fury, you have to understand the context of the situation. Context is key in this situation. Context is key in many situations, but especially in this situation right now. So let's take it back to 2018. The first meeting between Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury on December 1st, 2018. The fight ended in a draw. Most people believe that Tyson Fury won the fight and they believe that Deontay Wilder's two knockdowns were not enough to have earned him a draw in the fight. So it was a controversial one. Some people think Fury won, some people think it was a draw, which was the official result. And I mean, some Wilder fans would probably argue that Wilder won, which, you know, that's a bit, you know, bit of a stretch. In boxing, a draw always has to lead to a rematch. Although it wasn't an immediate rematch, Tyson Fury decided to sign a big £100 million deal with ESPN and this led him down the path of facing Tom Schwartz and then Otto Walling in between his rematch with Deontay Wilder and Deontay Wilder obviously because of this was forced to have fights in between the rematch and the first fight as well so he fought Dominic Brazil and he fought Luis Ortiz in what was itself a rematch. The first of Deontay Wilder's two intermediary fights was against Dominic Brazil at the Barclays Centre in New York where he scored a brutal, a devastating first round knockout over Dominic Brazil. The fight actually took place two weeks to the date that Anthony Joshua would make his American debut against Andy Ruiz Jr. at MSG where he famously got stopped by Ruiz. Two weeks after Anthony Joshua got stopped by Andy Ruiz Jr. at MSG and four weeks, a whole month, after Deontay Wilder KO'd Dominic Brazil at the Barclays Centre in New York. Tyson Fury made his ESPN debut, his top ranked debut against his fringe contender Tom Schwartz winning by second round TKO in Las Vegas. Fury then took on fringe contender Otto Wallin a few months later and got in some serious trouble in the fight. Wallin cut Fury over the top of the eye. If there was a different referee on the night, then it wouldn't have been a surprise to see Otto Wallen awarded with a TKO victory over Fury because that cut was absolutely horrendous. But credit to Fury, he fought on and won a hard fought unanimous decision in Las Vegas. Just over two months later, Deontay Wilder would have his rematch with Luis Ortiz at the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. And this was probably out of the four fights that happened in between Wilder Fury 1 and Wilder Fury 2. This is probably the best quality fight in terms of the opponent. The opponent was Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz is, or was at the time, definitely a top 10 heavyweight. Deontay Wilder was really struggling with Luis Ortiz during the first half of the fight. And Luis Ortiz was actually winning on the scorecards until the 7th round where Deontay Wilder landed a brutal, a devastating right hand to the forehead of Luis Ortiz, knocking him spark out to win the fight. Wilder Fury 2 was signed to take place on February 22nd, 2020, on pay-per-view, a joint pay-per-view between Top Rank and ESPN and PBC and Fox. As the fight was a joint pay-per-view, marketing was key and the fight secured one or two Super Bowl commercials, which if you didn't know, they cost over $5 million for a 30 second ad during the Super Bowl. The interactions between the two fighters during the lead up to the fight was quite interesting. And whenever Tyson Fury is involved, mind games are a key factor, especially during events like press conferences or weigh-ins. Tyson Fury uses his psychological skills to undermine his opponent. Fury claimed that he was going to knock Wilder out in the second round and he said it to Wilder's face but at the time it seemed ridiculous. However, Tyson Fury stuck to his word and Tyson Fury did TKO Deontay Wilder. 
after knocking Wilder down multiple times in multiple different rounds, Fury ended the fight in the seventh round by TKO. After the fight ended, and Tyson Fury became the new WBC World Heavyweight Champion, along with the Ring Magazine Heavyweight Champion, it was made clear by Wilder's team, by Fury's team, that there was a rematch clause in the contract, and that the rematch would happen soon enough, in the summer of 2020, possibly. However, obviously the global situation changed drastically, and therefore the media reporters were assuming that the fight would happen, and the promoters, such as Bob Arum, were coming out and explaining that there's penciled in dates in December, and that it could happen in Las Vegas at the Raiders Stadium, things like this. These, these were the rumours that were going around. Whilst all these rumours were flying about, Deontay Wilder, radio silence from him, not a single statement on whether he wants the rematch, or whether he doesn't want it, where he wants it to be, etc, etc. And now, present day, only a week ago, the British media, particularly, are printing stories saying that the rematch clause in the contract has expired and that Fury is now going to move on and fight in the UK in December. Shelley Finkel, Deontay Wilder's co-manager, actually came out and said that we still want the fight, we still think it's going to happen. However, Bob Arum and Frank Moran, who are both Tyson Fury's co-promoters, said that the fight isn't happening and that Tyson Fury will return to the UK in December and fight. One of the likes of Ajit Kabiel, Oscar Rivas, or maybe a rematch with Otto Wallin before a big undisputed showdown with Anthony Joshua in summer 2021. At this point in time, it looks unlikely that Deontay Wilder's team are going to take legal action against Tyson Fury and his team, but you never know. And this is just the story so far. So stuff will continue to develop and happen. Um, let me know what you guys think about the situation below, guys. Do you think that Wilder Fury 3 will still happen? Or do you think Tyson Fury is going to go on his own path? He's going to fight in December in the UK, as his team are saying, and then fight against Anthony Joshua considering he gets through his fight with Kubrat Pulev and then we could finally see an undisputed champion after waiting over 20 years since the last one being Lennox Lewis, another Brit. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more content, peace.